Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. And today we'll be looking at this problem that is called arranging coins. So you're given a total number of n coins that you want to form in a staircase shape where every k throw must have exactly k coins. So given n, you need to find the total number of full staircase rows that you can form. Uh, a basic, a basically a full staircase row would be, uh, let's say the row number is i. So you need to have a total of i coins in that row. So let's say we have an example that we're given here at n equal to 5. We see that the first row has one coin, which is valid. The second row has two coins, which is again valid. But the third row ends up having two coins instead of three because we run out of coins. So we say that the third row is incomplete and we return the last complete row that we could form, which was two, which is basically the total number of complete rows that we have in our staircase. So there is two ways to solve this problem. The first one being the naive way to solve it in linear time by iterating through each of these rows and seeing that if you are left with a valid number of uh, coins to fill up the next row and whenever you run out of coins, you simply return back the count of your uh, total number of rows that had a successful fill up, right? You can solve this problem in that manner and this will run on lead code and this will, uh, th that solution will get accepted, but that will be a slow solution and there is a much faster way to solve this problem. Uh, the faster way being to use binary search. This is a pretty ideal use case for binary search in fact, because you have a contiguous number of rows, one, two, three, four, five till n. And uh, by, and you have to find, uh, and these are like sorted numbers, like right, one, two, three, four, and five. And you have to find one number out of the search space and binary search is often very efficient in doing that. So you have a sorted list of numbers and you need to find the result. You can simply traverse through this entire series of numbers using binary search much quicker than using your normal iteration through the first to the last element, right? So let's see how we'll work with binary search. Let's take the example of n equal to eight that we are given here, right? So I'll just write out all these numbers from one to eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So these are all the possible number of staircases that we can have when we are given a total of n coins. So let's say uh, in usual binary search fashion, we start off at the middle element, the left boundary currently being one and the right boundary being eight. I'll just draw brackets here to denote our current search space that we have. So right now the current search space is ranging from one to eight and we have the middle element as four, right? One plus eight, gives you nine divided by two gives 4.5 and it gets converted to four because it's an integer. So we end up at four, n equal to four, meaning that can we fill up n equal to four rows? Can we fill up four complete rows when we have eight coins with us? So let's see. For filling up four rows, the total number of coins that you require will be one plus two plus three plus four, right? So this adds up to seven plus two, nine plus one, 10. So do we have 10 coins with us? No, we don't. And 10 is greater than eight. So this is an invalid number of rows. So we need to shorten our search space down from four and we need to search in the left-hand side of this element because obviously uh, it's just common sense that if we are falling short of coins in four rows, we'll obviously not be able to fill five, six or seven or eight rows, right? So we need to shorten the search space. So we shorten the search space down to one till, th till three because we see that four was an invalid number and naturally all the, uh, all the uh, following elements will also be invalid. So we reduce the search space into one, two and three, right? So let's see uh, how many, uh, let's see how we'll proceed further. Now the left bound becomes one and the right bound becomes three. So the middle element here, becomes two, right? So let's see how many coins we need to fill up two rows. It will simply be one plus two, and that is three. And we see that three is actually less than eight, and this is a valid solution. So we'll say that, okay, two is a possible solution, and we need to find the maximum number of rows. So let's search for, search in all the larger numbers that are larger than two in the remaining search space. And that brings us to the only remaining element, which is three. So we check out three, how many total number of coins we require to fill out three total rows. So we say it is equal to one plus two plus three 
which counts up to 6 and that is less than a and we say that this is again a valid case right so we say that we are we search the entire space as entire solution space the only element remaining was 3 and that turned out to be a valid element we don't have any other elements left so we return 3 as an answer right so let's start by implementing this I'll just remove this stuff or I'll just rather let it stay here so that it's easier to demonstrate stuff when we are writing the code. All right, so let's first begin. The thing is, when you're solving this question, you will face integer overflows when you are doing some calculations. And so it's always a good idea to uh, save this given n as a long number. So we'll write long n underscore long equal to n. And we'll typecast this into long, right? And also, before we get started, you might have kind of thought about it that find the total number of elements required to fill up n number of rows. If you follow the approach that we currently did, like 1 plus 2 plus 3 to find out the total number of elements you need for 3 rows, this again brings up your complexity to log of n. So a better way to do that would be to use this mathematical formula, which is n into n plus 1 divided by 2. So if n equal to is equal to 3, we'll get 3 into 3 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 6. So we'll use this formula rather than counting all the elements from 1 to n to find the total number of required coins. And this will be a much more efficient approach. And this will give us a true logarithmic uh, time algorithm. So you save long as n. So you save n as a long number in n long. Now we'll save the left bound as a long number again. We'll write long left equal to 1. We start off at the first element and the right bound will be equal to n underscore long itself, right? So now what you want to do is you want to run a binary search. So you'll simply open up a while loop and you'll write while left is smaller than equal to right while these elements till the point these elements intersect, we'll keep searching. Now we need to calculate the middle element. So we'll write long mid equal to left plus right minus left divided by two. This is just a fancy way to write, find the middle element. This is equivalent to left plus right by two. It just avoids an integer overflow when you add left plus right. So it all it does is it adds half the total number of elements to the left bound. So you reach the middle element, which is a more, it, which is a safer approach to find the mid. So we do it this way. Now we need to check if the total number of required coins to fill mid number of rows, if that's smaller than or equal to the total number of coins we have, which will be, which will give us our valid case. So we'll write if mid into mid plus one by two, if this value is smaller than equal to your total number of coins, which are stored in n underscore long. So n underscore long. If this is the case, we want to search in the right hand side of this uh, search space now, because we already know that mid gives us a valid answer. So we'll now search for the bigger number of elements that are possible. So we'll simply in increase the left bound to mid plus one. And if that was not the case, if we were running out of coins, it, me it means we need to look into smaller elements. And in the other case, we would have written right equal to mid minus one in typical binary search fashion. And that should basically be it. And once you are done, you need to just return this answer and you need to typecast that answer back into an integer and you'll return left minus one. Why do you do minus one? You write minus one because when you got the last valid mid, you increase the left to mid plus one. And that mid plus one probably turned out to be an invalid point, right? That mid plus one probably turned out to be an invalid point. That's why you exited the loop. So you to bring it back to the last valid position, you just subtract one to get back to the original mid. That was your answer. So with that done, let's just submit that. And this should probably give us a correct answer. 
and yes it runs in four milliseconds faster than 79.21 percent and that is pretty good so this is how you solve this problem if you like this video hit the like button if you want to see more content from my channel subscribe to it and hit the subscribe button down below and i will see you in the next video